Good morning. Good morning. Want to welcome you here, whether you're sitting out here in the pews or out in the internet land. If you are out there, please leave us a, a like, a share. <laughs> leave us, leave us a like, a share, or a comment, so we know you're out there. All right. Uh, so we'll joke this morning. Chicken walks into a library. Walks up to the librarian and says, book. The librarian middle, what's this chicken? Well, what kind of book do you want? The chicken just says, book. So the librarian, he just grabs his book off the shelf. You don't know, hand it to the chicken. The chicken runs out of the library. About an hour later, the chicken comes back. Walks up to the librarian and says, book. The librarian, another one? Book. All right. So this reaches over, grabs another book off the shelf, hands it to the chicken. chicken out of the library. About an hour later, here comes a chicken back. Chicken walks up to the library. Book! You want another book? Chicken says, Book! Okay. So the reason over, grabs another book off the shelf, hands it to the chicken. Chicken runs for the door. And says, well, I want to find out what this chicken's doing with all these books. You know? So it follows the chicken. Chicken runs down the road for a while. Turns off on this little gravel road, runs down this gravel road, turns off on this little path, walks down, goes to the path, goes down to this pond. Chicken walks up to this frog, gives the frog a book. Frog looks at the book and goes, Let it. trustees get together after the service for a short meeting today. Um, March 30th, WM meeting is at 2 p.m. Be right here at the church. April 6th at 11.30 a.m. is ladies' luncheon. April 7th is the SRBA executive board meeting. April 8th, the Trinity Youth Rally fundraiser dinner. Uh, April 10th to the 17th at 6.30 p.m. The Holy Week Revival at Pino Baptist Church. Uh, April 17th is Easter Sunday. We'll be having sunrise service down at Morris Lake at 6.30. Breakfast here at the church at 7. Then Sunday school will be 8. And the morning worship will be at 9. And April 18th at 2 p.m. WM meeting. Monty's the leaders. Uh, noisy offering is an Annie Armstrong mission. Shoebox items are quality crafts. And the WM mission action is items for the Hope Center. Is there any other announcements? Yes, Thursday I come to clean and went downstairs and we've been messing with that dehumidifier and I looked at it and because it was running, running, running like it always is and looked at it and it was all froze up so I unplugged it. So it is unplugged downstairs. The list for the Easter breakfast is out on the front table. You want to sign up what you want to bring. Okay. Any other announcements? How about anniversaries or birthdays? Our anniversary yep. was on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Are you coming? <laughs> I was here last Sunday. Uh, Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. 
Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. How many years, Laurie? 38. That's all I have. <coughs> well, you know, they say in Missouri, you can always go and wait a minute, it'll change. And I, I think this week was typical. Um, but you know one thing that I'm that thrills me is what never changes, and that is the love of God's people. And uh, it, it, uh, it always impresses me, and it doesn't matter what church I go into. Um, once upon a time, I was the, uh, I, had the I had the opportunity to be the, one of the lay preachers at, a, uh, at one of the lay revivals. And the particular day that I was going to see it was at the um, Cowboy Church, back when the Cowboy Church used to have them at the sale barn. This city boy had never been inside a sale barn. <laughs> and when I walked in, there was no podium. You just stand there where, I mean, if there was cows in there, they would have been right there. Um, and you just stand up there. But you know what? As people start coming in, you see people walking by, carrying Bibles, you know, referring to each other as brother and sister. I was in church. I was in church there as much as I am in church here this morning. And the reason for that is because the Holy Spirit walked in that place. Let's invite him here, shall we? We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity to come and worship this morning, to come and lift up our voices in song, our, our voices in proclamations and worship to you. And we just pray, Father, that from the very first announcement to the final amen, everything in between would bring honor and glory to your name. That each person here would fear, would feel the burdens uplifted and the, the true joy of the Lord resting upon their face. As we offer this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Turn, if you will, to page 500. Page 500. Let's stand together and sing Trust and Obey. you and the freedom that we have to do so. Uh, I pray a special blessing upon um, Carolyn's family. Uh, her husband is not well and she passed away and I just pray that you just be with her and and uh, also um, be with different ones that especially need you. Be with Arlene's family still and watch over them. Thank you for all the way that uh, everyone has helped them through this time situation. And I pray that you uh, be with Pastor Dan as he brings the message today. And just be with each family and the situations and problems that they have. And be with all the new babies that are coming in different families. And watch over them and have them to be uh, safely born. Thank you for... Uh, the freedoms that you have given to us, and I pray for those who have been uh, killed in uh, um, the Ukraine and for the settlement that we could have within uh, 
Russia. I thank you, Barbara, again, this church, and how that everyone pitches in and helps one another and prays for one another. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lorraine. Be seated, please, and turn to 538. Once to every man and nation, 538.
Sorry, what did that say? You can sit down if you like. Go ahead and start the music. Oh, yeah. 
money, talents, time and love. Consecrate them all upon the altar. While your Savior told all of us, be sweetly trusted and tried me. Through his name, the Lord of hosts and seen a blessing, a measure blessing. So the topic today is how others know. And I, I don't know how well you all can see this picture, but it's a, it's a child staring into a body of water. And the reflection back is that of Jesus. Because, and the, so the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because often, uh, I, I have definitely said it, some of you have said it, we give our prayers and we say something to the effect of, um, may it be obvious that we've been in the presence of God. Okay? I, I know I've said it. Some of you have said it. May it be obvious we've been in the presence of God. I personally, and this is just me being me, I would think it pretty cool if we all glowed like Moses. You remember that when he went up and got the Ten Commandments and he came down and they actually said, um, they said, you know, Moses, you're pretty bright. And he said, oh, well, thank you. He said, no, no, you're, you're glowing. You're bright. You know, can you, can you wear a veil over that? And he did. He wore the veil until the, until the glow left. And uh, wouldn't that be neat? You know, yo, dude, you, you've been to church. Can you, you know, back off a little bit? I don't know, that, me, I think that would be pretty neat, but uh, I can see how it could get annoying to some people. Um, but generally speaking, that's not how it works. But it is possible. I mean, we, would, we wouldn't pray it if it wasn't possible, right? It is possible for others to see that <coughs> we have been in the presence of God. But that begs a question, doesn't it? It begs the question of how? How are they going to know we have been in the presence of God. Well, in my studies on this question, some of the references I'm going to refer to, um, well, not references, some of the uh, illustrations come from a, a Reverend Jim May. Now, he's in Prairieville, Louisiana. Um, and I really like um, some of his references, so I'm, I'm going to be share those with you today, so I, I want to give a nod towards him for that. Um, 
<laughs> but in Acts 4.13, we see this playing out. In Acts 4.13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. In theology circles, they often use this verse as an example of how one may know that his disciples were around him, that he had been with Jesus. You see, that's quite the comment because Jesus has been gone at this point for two months. He got crucified two months ago. And a lot of the general population had kind of returned to their daily lives, which had been the case with every predecessor to Jesus that claimed to be the Messiah. Because that is, after all, what the, what the uh, Pharisees said, is that we will take care of him, and just like all of his predecessors, his disciples will scatter, and that will be the end of it. But one of them, who turned out to be a disciple himself, said, but if they don't, then he was. And that's exactly what happened. The disciples didn't scatter like the others. Well, they, they did go, but they, they were spreading the word with them. So, Peter and John come into town, and it didn't take long for the people to realize there is something different about these two. They weren't religious fanatics, which were pretty commonplace. They weren't insurrectionists against the Romans, which again was pretty commonplace. And they weren't rebellious Christians trying to fight against the religious establishment. But even the doubters and the sinners realized these people, these two, have been with Jesus. So what exactly did they see? Well, they saw three things. The first one being that they saw compassion. In Acts 3, verses 1 through 8, we read, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, I love this verse. Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now something I found interesting is actually the next line. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. The question for you to be asking me is, why? What's the relevance? How many of you in here, raise your hand, are right-handed? <coughs> Who's here left-handed? That, that should have been the way I went, okay. Yeah, because only 10% of the population is left-handed. So that means more than likely, 90% chance, this man gave up his dominant hand in order to be lifted up. Which means he was gonna, if he was gonna support himself at all, it was with his weaker arm. And you know what? That's the same truth for us. When it comes to following God, when it comes to relying on Jesus, we have to give up our dominance and rely on his. So this man is lifted up and immediately his feet and ankle bones receive strength. 
And this guy's happy. That's an understatement. I mean, a minute ago, this guy could not walk. Now he is literally standing, walking, entering with them into the tape, into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Can you imagine? Moments, moments ago, he could not walk. Now he's jumping around like a lunatic. Praising God. Now, these who had been with Jesus when he walked upon the earth, but now the Holy Spirit resided within them. They were changed. They were different. Now they had a love for people. God had interrupted their plans, changed their plans to fulfill the calling of God upon their lives. And now they had compassion and took the time to show this man the love of God. You can't help it. I'm telling you, if you have been in the presence of Jesus, who was himself a man of compassion, you will be compassionate towards others. The second characteristic that is going to emit from you is courage. Over in the fourth chapter of Acts, we see this in the lives of Peter and John. Verses 1 through 3 reading, And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people, and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them, and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now even tide. They were arrested. The Pharisees and the Sadducees are kind of shaking their head, thinking, you know, we, we, we kill this quote-unquote Messiah, and his disciples aren't smart enough to leave town. They're still hanging out. They're still preaching his name. They have been warned before. would say that they had a higher calling. So as they preached to the Jews about the crucifixion and the resurrection, to the Jews, this became a stumbling block because they were pointing out that the Jews had murdered Jesus Christ. And they had the courage to speak the truth even though they were surrounded by the opposition. I want to share with you a story. It's kind of a long story, but but I think you have to hear almost in its entirety in order to get the impact. It is the week before September 11, 2001. A young man and his new wife had spent a romantic getaway in Italy. Todd was 32-year-old businessman. <laughs> They came home on Monday, rested, spent some time with his children, David three and Andrew one. And the very next day, he had a business trip. He was an executive with a company called Oracle. So he had a sales rep meeting that was gonna be in North Carolina. So he left for that. He kissed his wife and children goodbye and headed to Newark, New Jersey to catch his plane, where he, board, where he boarded United Flight 93, heading for San Francisco. He was 90 minutes into that westbound flight when the 757 was approaching Cleveland, when three hijackers identified that they were hijackers <laughs> and took control of the plane, holding 34 passengers, seven crew members. Now, the plane armed by terrorists made a sharp turn to the south. Todd, as I had said, was an executive, so he was traveling business class. Business class has access to air phones. So he ducks down 
uses one of the air phones, calls the GTE supervisor, and explained to her what was happening, and that it was his fear they would not survive this. He presumed, he told her that he presumed the co-pilot and pilot were either seriously injured or dead, and the GTE employee explained to Todd what had already happened at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Upon hearing this, Todd realized their fate. And also realized that he believed they were heading to somewhere in Washington, D.C. And they did. See, Todd was a Sunday school teacher. He knew where his faith came from. So, to this person on the other end of the phone, she's hearing him saying the Lord's Prayer, while in the background she can hear yelling, screaming, crying. And as they finished, Scott ends the prayer and he says, Help me, God. Help me, Jesus. And then the employee can hear Todd talking to somebody else. And he says, Are you ready, guys? Let's roll. And the phone goes blank. In a few minutes, Flight 93 took a nosedive into a field southeast of Pittsburgh, where it created a crater 40 feet deep as it totally disintegrated upon impact. But thanks to him and those three businessmen who aided him, another target was saved. We have no idea how many lives they saved. His wife, of course, did get the message. And she, would be, she would be quoted as saying, His example of courage has given me, my boys, and my unborn baby a reason to live. Now, Satan is still hijacking lives this very day. And we need that courage that Todd, Keem Todd Beamer had to pull those planes down, to pull those people away from the edge. We need to rescue them from themselves. It was the preacher Charles Spurgeon said, There is something in the very tone of a man who has been with Jesus, which has more power to touch the heart than the most perfect oratory. <clears throat> of course, we recognize that power, don't we? It's the Holy Spirit. And then the third characteristic is that of commitment. Peter and John were sold out to Jesus Christ. They were committed there was no family, no friend, nothing in this world that meant more. Reverend, oh, I already forgot his name. He, he made a comment, and I, I hope he's wrong. He said, if the law were passed today that it was a crime to talk about Jesus, some Christians would not only not be bothered by that, they'd be relieved. Because now they could not talk about Jesus and say that the law was the reason. You know, 
truth is, if the disciples had just lived their lives, just gone about, gone back to being fishermen or whatever they did, life would have been so much easier. They wouldn't have been under danger of persecution. They wouldn't have suffered imprisonment. They wouldn't have had well, flailings or stonings or beatings or any of the other things that happened to them. Because they were saved. They were good. But that wasn't their mission. It's not ours either. If you've ever truly met Jesus Christ, then you would have to say the same thing they said when they were pulled aside and told, you weren't to speak of this name again, and yet you did. And they responded, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. In Acts 5, someone goes to the Pharisees and says, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach it in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Well, duh. But keep in mind who he's saying this to. He's saying this to the high priest. That's kind of sad, isn't it? You kind of think the high priest would know that. They've been commanded to keep quiet, but they can't. They had a higher calling. You may not know the name, but you know the story. The name is Truett Cathy. He is the founder of Chick-fil-A restaurants. Chick-fil-A is extremely successful. They are in malls across the country. And they have been asked various times since they opened in 1948 to open on Sundays. I mean, after all, they're in the malls. People are roaming all over the place. Please open on Sundays. You won't do it. Right? You're losing millions of dollars of business. Don't care. His commitment was to honor the Lord's Day. And public opinion doesn't drive that decision. Thank goodness. Sometimes that, that commitment seems to be lacking in the church. And I don't mean this physical body, I mean the church at large. Doesn't seem to be a lot of influence, doesn't seem to be a lot of power. Um, there are spurts of it. Billy Graham was awesome. And occasionally you run into someone who you feel somehow a kindred. This person has been in the presence of God. So again, how can you tell if someone has been in the presence of Jesus? Three things. They're going to have compassion. They're going to have courage. And they're going to have a commitment. 
You see those three things. Praise God. And my prayer is not that you see those three things, but that others see those three things when looking at you. Brother Jerry. Four hundred twelve. Four one two. The Savior is waiting. Let's stand this in. That court almost had me. Well, thank you all for being in our, our service today and for being a part of it. And uh, I hope that there was something, whether it be the whether it be the sermon or even one of the songs or passing conversation you have with another as you leave today. I hope that you take something out of the service this morning. I actually have every faith that you will. Uh, I do remind you that we will have our uh, prayer meeting tonight at six thirty. We do ask that the deacons and the trustees gather together just prior to leaving. It shouldn't take very long. And are there any other announcements that either were not mentioned earlier or bear repeating? What is Wednesday for those ladies? Is that the restaurant?
for the lady? That's an excellent thing. The women's meeting. meeting. Okay. W meeting. W M meeting will be here. That's what I thought. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Two o'clock Wednesday. Two o'clock. Okay. And Tony, could I ask you to give our closing prayer? Sure. Sure. We just uh, praise you and thank you for the freedoms that we have and uh, that we can gather together and, and worship you. Just be with us as we uh, go about our our lives and leave here and just keep your comforting arms on us. Be with those that are, are sick and sorrow and be with those that, that couldn't be here for, for many reasons. And just help people be our light and us that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There was something that only mentioned uh, all the freedom that uh, I don't know if y'all seen them.